so, does that mean there's been nothing more done about the moon in space exploration ever since the early 70s? Well, there was a bit of a pause, and there was a lot of other priorities, but it's not over. In fact, right now, there's kind of been a new kickstart. And in particular, there's been a big drive from countries not named the US or Russia. It's this new world of space where, because of cost and because of science, as we'll mention in a second, all of these countries who weren't in the race in the 60s and 70s are now leading a new race back to the moon. I think very often the motivation is very much the same. It's a national pride to show that we are a technologically advanced, serious nation. We can land probes on other planets. It's true, right? Um, when China landed uh, Chang'e uh, 4, they were proudly to say, we're the third country to land on the moon. Um, and uh, look, you should be proud. If you're the third at something, that's not bad. But this was a big technological achievement, not just because this probe landed on the moon, lots of missions have landed on the moon, but they're also the third country to land a rover on the moon. And it's actually where they landed on the moon that really caught people by surprise. So this landed on the far side of the moon. That's right. Now remember, the far side, people often think it's the dark side. It's not. I mean, it has just as much daylight and night as anything else. That's right. But it is difficult to communicate with the Earth, which is why Apollo will land on the near side. Because if you're on the far side, you can't see the Earth. I mean, it means the radio waves. There's no ionosphere on the moon to bounce them around. So that means they can't directly communicate to the Earth. In fact, and during the Apollo day, they always worried when they went around the far side of the moon because they had the blackouts, and if something went catastrophically wrong, can't really phone home. So how did it communicate? So this was quite amazing. So in order to do this, they created a relay system. They were able to build two satellites and put them on each side of the moon. So the far side can see to the left and to the right, sends one signal to either the left or the right, depending on the orientation, and then that signal relays the message back to Earth. Okay, so very much like communication satellites on Earth, use a network of them to send the signals around to the opposite side. That's right, but that requires money. You have to build this technology to work. You have to put it there. So this achievement wasn't just about getting something or a rover on the moon. It was all this other stuff that came with it, the huge technology investment to say, hey, we can create a communication system for the moon. Hadn't been done previously. But in some ways, it's much easier now than it was back. I mean, it's also amazing to me, the technology used in Apollo, it's so primitive. <laughs> I mean, my smartphone will now have uh, far more power than everything NASA had, all their mainframes combined. In fact, I think my wristwatch probably has more <laughs> power than everything that NASA had combined. So it would, in some sense, it was amazing. It needed a huge spike in the budget to do anything with their technology. But nowadays, you can... You, often cobble together something using smartphone technology or the other electronics nowadays, which should make the communication much easier than it was back then. That's right, and this is why we're also now starting to see these new missions because it's a little bit easier and more importantly, cheaper. You don't have to invest that $150 billion to invest in that. You can do it for a fraction of the cost. Now, one of the exciting science missions this had, again, for showing how to get things, anything, back to the moon, was that um, on this uh, rover, they had essentially a little biosphere. They had cotton seeds, potato seeds, and silkworms. So the silkworms breathe, they breathe out carbon dioxide, that helps the cotton seeds here, and this is day three to day nine. So in six days, they started to have sprouting cotton seeds. Now, they died about a few days later because they went into the nighttime side of the moon and... That's very cold. <laughs> yeah, so that doesn't matter. They weren't trying to create something long-living. They were just trying to show, can we create something to live on the far side of the moon? No, no one had ever done that before. Was it actually using lunar soil to grow these things in, or was it growing on in its own internal mix it brought from Earth? No, so that's a good question. So this was brought all from Earth. They brought the soil and the water in it but they were able to survive the temperature and radiation, as we talked about, uh, in space. So it was a good step in the right direction, plus all the other stuff they did. But this hasn't stopped China. They built the fifth mission as part of it, Chang'e 5. Uh, and this not only was a lander, but as we're seeing here, drilled down into the lunar surface. So the Americans took lots of rocks back with them. Uh, hundreds of kilograms with rocks on their Apollo missions. Which we talk about in the planet section of the course in great detail. That's right. And the Russians had some robotic missions that went there. So China was able to be the third country to now land on the moon, take some samples, 
and more importantly, bring those samples back. They landed in Mongolia about uh, six months after the entire mission. So we, we have the canister depositing the samples here, and we'll see it start to, to shake out. And so now they were able to get their own samples from a new position on the moon that hadn't been studied to look for what they think are the more useful things to support their human endeavors. As we'll talk about in a bit, the name of the game is ultimately stuff we can use. But China's not the only one. India. Also Chandrayaan-1. And Chandrayaan-1 was launched in 2009. And this was actually probably one of the most fundamental missions, I think, that changed what we are doing on the moon. So the Indian Space Research Organization had some missions um, and instruments. One was from NASA. And one of the things that they did was map in detail the quantities of material on the moon. Now, we have three rough different colors. The most important is blue. And blue is representing something in the what we call the hydroxyl family, i.e. something with the hydrogen and oxygen. OK, so that's where there might be water. Might be water. And for a lot of reasons, that got people really, really excited, as we'll talk about. Now, the green is reflected sunlight, and the red is iron composite. So not a dramatic change of what we're understanding here. But if you remember, most of the Apollo missions landed on the main part of the moon because they had to be able to talk to the Earth for all the reasons you mentioned. The poles have not been explored in detail until Sean Ryan 1. And when all of a sudden people started to see, ooh, there's ice, there's water, now all of a sudden everyone's interest starts to peak in this body up there, including India, who followed up with their second. Then the name of the game is if you do it well once, you do it twice. Uh, so India uh, in 2017 launched Chandrayaan 2. So not only there, did they have the orbiter, but as other countries, they built a rover uh, and a lander. So they were not just going to image from the surface or from space, but they were going to land on the surface to explore those ice deposits. Now this didn't work, did it? It didn't. Uh, ultimately, the answer is space is still really hard. And even though the moon has been done and people have gone before, it's still hard to get to the moon. And Chandrayaan 2, uh, the lander, came in a bit too fast. They had a problem at the very end um, with the communication system, the lander. It hit the ground a bit too hard. That was it. That was it. The orbiter worked, though. So they kind of got 50% of the way. 50% for your second admission? I don't think that's that bad. Indeed. Um, and they, again, they tried to get to the moon. Uh, Earlier that year, Israel had tried as well in April 2017, so Space I.O. with the Bereshit. So this was quite exciting because this not just was a new country, but it was also a private company. The money came not from a national, a national organization, but private backers to build their own probes. So now we're starting to see private companies become interested in the moon. And that's because it's becoming much cheaper now that... Uh with so much off-the-shelf electronics. And also, there's a large body of knowledge about how to do it. That's right. We've done it before. Uh, you could do it again. Space IL, the sheet costs about $920 million. Chandrayaan-2 uh, costs about $710 million. These are adjusted US dollars. Now, that's a lot less than 50, 100. I mean, you, you, can't, you can't even imagine how much less this is, that you can do a mission for under a hundred million dollars to get to the moon you know that was in a fraction that's why it's changing as you said now the the knowledge is there the technology is there and now the money's there so you can do it now unfortunately it had also a hard landing which is a kind of a technical term for crash this is from the nasa lunar reconnaissance orbiter uh in december 2016 and then a couple days <laughs> there, there's a new crater on the moon from the probe but that's okay that doesn't change it um but this the story doesn't end here these are all missions being planned to the moon so we have chong 5 which has already landed there russia is planning more india is going to do it again they said look we could do it once and this is what the apollo program did once you do it once you can do it again because that knowledge is already there and you can also do it cheaper and it's not just the traditional companies germany india japan private companies in japan blue origin as uh, we'll talk about later space il2 uh, and importantly the artemis the us's return to the mission uh, moon mission so all of these are now 
it's, it's kind of the moon is becoming the happening place. Fantastic. And this is mostly because of the, it's now cheaper. Technology is I kind of imagined if there hadn't been that mad panic early on, you'd have had a steadily rising amount of technology and it had been landing on the moon about now. Yep. You had this incredible glitch because of this mad panic. Uh, and sometimes it's now reverted back to what maybe it should have been all along, a more slow, steady procedure. Exactly. So it's kind of balancing out in a way. It's cheaper, we have a reason, and there's a lot of stuff and drivers to go use on the moon, which we'll talk about. But it's still a lot of national pride involved. Still a lot of national pride. That's why there's a lot of countries that are listed here.